a supremacist walked into my guest meeting, got right in his face on the platform, and shouted, I hate black people. You will be in awe when you find out what our God did next. I have to do this on every show. Welcome, Holy Spirit. I want you to demonstrate God and Jesus so magnificently that the world will be astounded. After a defining encounter with God, my guest, Chasten Strickland's life has been marked by carrying the glory, fire, and explosive miracles. But that was not always the case. He knows what it is to feel overwhelmed with no way out. Chaz, like many his age, made some very bad choices. Chaz, what was going on in your life? Well, Sid, I grew up as a good kid. Um, I grew up, I had a background where I really hadn't done anything very bad. But when we backslid from God around the age of 16, I started to get into all types of things, bad friends. I started looking for romance in the wrong places. I also began to sell stolen items. My grades plummeted. Um, and I just began to experience so many things to the point where you would never look at me today and think that that was my past. So you hit bottom and your mom <laughs> tells you to come to church with her. Why did you go? Well, that same week, I started feeling like I wanted to get back in, right pla in my right place with God. And so my mom asked me and I decided I would go with her. Well, while we were driving there, I said, well, mom, you're going to the wrong church. That's not the one we used to go to. And she said, there's a different church that I want to take you to. And I remember when we hit the parking lot of this new ministry, immediately you could feel the presence of God. And instantly I started trembling and I started to weep even in the parking lot. And you could hear this sound that now I know is the sound of glory. But I did not know what that was in the beginning. And I remember thinking, what on earth is this sound? We, as we got closer to the building, the presence of God intensified. It was electric on the inside of there. People were praying in tongues. They were clapping, shouting, crying on the floor. Everything you can imagine was going on in the atmosphere all at one time. But what stood out to me was this sound. And I was being touched and I started shaking from the inside out. And it was that encounter of being in the midst of a glory movement, a, gl a glory atmosphere where there was a sound of glory where I was never the same again. This triggered then the supernatural in your life. Like for instance, um, angels, angels speaking in your ear. Well, after I go to this service, I received a prophecy while I was there. And after I received a prophecy, within that week I was saved. And that atmosphere opened a dimension. And I remember one night I was falling asleep. I was like half asleep, half awake. And I felt a tap on my shoulder, a physical tap on my shoulder. But when I looked, there was no one standing there, Sid. And while no one was standing there, I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go back to bed. Maybe I'm just going crazy. <laughs> but then I feel that tap again. And when I feel the tap again, an angel speaks to me audibly in my physical ears. So not in my spirit, in my physical ears, I could feel the wind of the angel's breath on my ear. And this is what the angel said. I am an angel from the Lord and I was sent to give you a message. But when the message began to pour out, I no longer heard war words. Water went into my ear, but it went into the innermost part of my being and I was filled, I felt myself increasing in weight as this water was being poured into me. And instantly after that day, the realms of mysteries and secrets were open to me. In 2014, you were going through a tough time. Uh, what I found is that's the place that you usually have a visitation from God. Um, you're actually ready to quit. Uh, 
You're, uh, and then you decide, I'm going to increase my time of praying in tongues. What happened? <laughs> so I'm in this time. I, I wanted to give up. It seemed like nothing was working for me. But I have just something in my instincts where I just don't like to quit. And even though I wanted to, I just refused to. And so I decided, let me pray in tongues. I can't tell you how many hours a day I was doing, but I can tell you this. Any idle moment that I had was, was given over to praying in tongues. And as I was praying in tongues, I didn't realize that I was about to be thrusted into a dimension of glory fire. And so what happened is this pr time of praying in tongues opened up an encounter with God. I was going to sleep and often this is when God loves to encounter me. And I'm in that place where I'm half asleep, half awake. And I hear the, I call it the inner audible voice of God because I didn't hear it audibly in my natural ears, mm -hmm. but I heard the actual words of God inside of my spirit. But he shouted and he shouted these two words, revival, awakening. And when he shouted these two words, I was infused, literally soaked with fire. I mean, fire came on me, in me, and everything I began to do after that was defined by fire. My DNA was changed that day. Our ministry shifted that day. When I began to preach, fire began to come out of my mouth. When I prophesied, fire began to come out of my mouth. When I laid hands on people, fire began to come out. There were even times, Sid, where I would just be talking like what we're doing now, and fire would go into entire atmospheres, and it was from what I received in that one encounter. And you were commissioned at that time. Yes, I believe that the fire of God can commission us. Moses had an encounter with God at the burning bush, and not only was he, was he equipped, because in that encounter, he received an impartation of the wonders that shook Egypt. And, and, and then he was sent to go. That's what happened to me, to be a part of a coming move of God, one that's stirring up even now. Now, tell me about that meeting in Dallas in 2018 when an angel put a coat on you. Explain that. Well, I'm in a meeting and I'm not ministering. I'm there just participating. It was a prayer meeting. And as we were praying, you could feel the heaviness of God starting to sort of sit on the room. The weight of it just increased. And so what happened next was I'm standing there and I feel something heavy get placed like on my shoulders and it was almost like it was dressing me. And as it was dressing me, I start to fall forward and the pastor looks at me and says, there's an angel standing behind you and is giving you a mantle. A mantle is being cloaked on you right now. And after that service, I can't tell you the way the glory of God began to manifest. You said to me, I feel that same fire now. What does that usually mean? Many times when I feel this, I can point to services where God will come down on me either right before the service or the night before the service. And that's that same mantle. The Lord told me when this happens, it's the same mantle that came on you in that Dallas meeting. And whenever that has happened, that is when I see the most miracles. That's when the blind eyes open. That's when the deaf ears open. That's when, even when I start to preach, that's when people, no matter where they are in the room, those that are hungry, they start to be slain in the spirit, similar to Maria Woodworth Eder. This is going on with you. What happens to the members of your congregation? What's going on with them? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. They are a wild group. They are so <laughs> hungry. And I remember, uh, just to explain as an example, um, I was in a service and the glory realm just opened up. The fire of God was everywhere in this service. I sense God tell me to pray for medical professionals. And so I call up anyone that worked in the medical field because I believe they had more access to pray for the sick. Of course. And I wanted to pray a prayer of impartation of healings and miracles. And so I pray for that resurrection glory to be activated in the people by the fire of the Spirit. And one woman, she was one of the medical professionals that came. And when she came up, she receives prayer. It was the first time I saw her. Two weeks later, she comes back to the service. But at the end, she literally interrupted our offering time. And so we bring a mic to her, and when she brings the mic up, she says, I'm a surgical tech. So I'm in the surgery room while doctors do surgery, 
And when I was at a surgery, a man died and the doctors tried to resuscitate him, but they couldn't do it. And they were about to officially declare this man dead. This woman re re remembers the impartation that she, she received in that meeting, that prayer of impartation. And once she remembered that, she prays for him and the man raises from the dead by the resurrection glory of Jesus, but through the impartation. And so fire is contagious. You can't get around fire and then not get on everything. Speaking of fire, tell me about the drunk Muslim that came into your congregation. <laughs> well, Sid, we were having a meeting and I was actually just preaching and the anointing was strong, but I wasn't expecting what was about to happen. He comes up to the pulpit and he starts interrupting the meeting and he starts talking about how basically we're all serving the same God and how there's no differences in our God. And I said, well, I respect you and I love you, but I want you to know this, my God answers by fire. And he's like, well, I don't agree in where he's going through this theology, but see, we have a generation that's not gonna be reached just through theology. This generation needs demonstration. And I said, well, I'll do this, I'll challenge you. My God, the anointing you feel right now, this is fire from my God. I said, I wanna lay my hands on you. And when you fall out, I want you to know that this is my God. This wasn't a religious churchgoer. This wasn't someone that had been in revival meetings. This is a drunk Muslim man. My hand starts to go towards him, he falls out. And when he fell out, he's on the ground for like five minutes. And then when he finally gets up, the look on his face, he couldn't believe it. And the fire of God is going to touch the unbelievers as well. A day is coming where people are gonna walk into our churches and encounter us, see us in media, see us on social media, and even the unbelievers will feel the fire of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know what I love about the ministry? It's wonderful this is happening to him, but it's happening to members of his congregation. They're walking in miracles. They're going to heaven. They're, you just heard about raising the dead. Uh, this is normal. Briefly, tell me the three kinds of holy fire. Well, when the fire of God comes, I started to notice that when the fire manifests, because fire is a manifestation of God's glory. We see that all throughout the Bible in a pattern. But I started to notice that there are different types of fire, meaning that when the fire would come, it would come for a different purpose. I would see times where the fire of God would come and it would be connected to the fear of the Lord. And one thing I've discovered is that when the glory, when the fear of the Lord comes, oftentimes this is associated to very high realms of glory. And that's why many times in the Bible we would see when the glory would manifest, people would be afraid or they would see an angel that was carrying that fear of the Lord and they would be afraid. We would see when Jesus transfigured on the mountaintop, the three men, the three disciples, they shook and it, they trembled with fear because of the dimension of glory that brought the fear of the Lord with it. And so that's one of the manifestations that I see. Um, the other thing I've noticed is this refining fire, this fire that starts to purify, this fire that starts to cause us to become holy. I see, I don't want to just be someone that moves and gifts and prophesies. I want to be Christ-like. And this fire comes and it transforms us. It's a transforming fire. And then there's a fire that actually when it comes upon us, it ignites a passion. It's a fire that comes, it, it ignites a passion, but it also gives us power. And we see where fire activates people in the supernatural. David, he prays a prayer and he says, Lord, light my candle and then I will run through a troop and then I will leap over a wall. So in other words, when that fire comes, it, it awakens the godlike nature on the inside of us. And we start to see things that are written in the Bible flow out of us, even in our modern days, just by fire. Some people just need more fire. They have a lot of theology, but they need a little bit more fire. Well, you know, the, the glory is a two-edged sword. Yes, all the good things happen, but yes, all the bad things come to the surface. And I would rather get rid of the bad things now 
then wait till the glory of the living God, the fear of the living God came upon me. I want you to say this prayer with me right now. Believe it to the best of your ability. Say it out loud because God has called you to experience His glory. Repeat out loud, Dear God, God, I made many mistakes mistakes. for which I'm so sorry. I believe believe. the blood of Jesus Jesus is more than enough, enough. and it's washing away every wrong thing I've ever done. And I am clean. clean. It's so good to be clean. clean. Jesus, come and live inside of me. me. I make you my Savior. I make you my my Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't wait for you to see what God did to the supremacist that disrupted Chaz's meeting. He wouldn't want to be in his shoes. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Call now and get Chasden Strickland's powerful book, Supernatural Upgrade, Keys to Walking in the Glory Realm, and his exclusive and anointed three-part audio CD teaching set, Sounds of Glory, Strategies to Operate in the Supernatural. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. You can't get this anywhere else. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9826. You will receive Chasden Strickland's powerful book, Supernatural Upgrade. Grade, keys to Walking in the Glory Realm. Jesus trained His disciples to walk in the miraculous by healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, and bringing the Kingdom of Heaven to Earth. This is Jesus' definition of normal life. Through Chasden's book, Supernatural Upgrade, He offers powerful teaching and testimonies to train you how to enroll in the School of the Holy Spirit, stoke the passion and fire of God in your life, access greater dimensions of the glory realm, press in the resurrection glory, discover how to live as God's offspring on earth, get ready to walk in the supernatural realms and realities you've read about in Scripture. You will also receive Chaston Strickland's three-part audio CD teaching set, Sounds of Glory, Strategies to Operate in the Supernatural. Through this audio CD series, you will be activated in the supernatural. Learn to access the heavenly glory. Discover how to partner with heaven's windows, gates, and doors. Learn to position yourself for signs and wonders. Encounter God's glory and move from theory to demonstrations. See it, feel it, and hear it. Your encounter with the Lord will radically change your world and destiny. Chasden imparts anointed prayers over you to begin walking in the supernatural of God and experience God's glory. Don't miss out on getting Chasden Strickland's powerful book, Supernatural Upgrade, Keys to Walking in the Glory Realm, and his exclusive and anointed three-part audio CD teaching set, Sounds of Glory, Strategies to Operate in the Supernatural. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. You can't get this anywhere else. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9826. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9826 or log on to sidroth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. You got us on the edge of our seat. The supremacist comes into your congregation. He gets in the pulpit with you. He goes face to face. What happened? Well, Sid, this was not really a happy moment for me at first. (laughs) I'm sure. If you could imagine. The funny thing was, I didn't even notice he was there at first. Um, I, I come into the service, and they're already in worship by this point. And so when I get up to the stage, I end up feeling in my spirit to talk about the Good Samaritan. And I start talking about the Good Samaritan, and I start actually dealing with racial division. And suddenly, this big, and I mean prison big, this guy is huge. (laughs) He stands up, and he has to be six foot seven. He missed his calling as like an NFL tight end. 
and he gets up and he starts aggressively walking towards me. And I'm watching this guy walk towards me and everything except praying in tongues is in my mind. I'm terrified. And so then I go, well, hopefully I have to defend myself today. I don't know. And all the guys at my church, they don't stop him. Everyone lets him walk right up. And so he walks right up. And once he gets right in front of me, he lets me know I don't like black people. But suddenly, it's like he was arrested. I suddenly felt that fear of the Lord blanket the room and it was intense. And I could see this man in like a war in his own mind. And all of a sudden the presence of the Holy Spirit, this is without me saying anything. This is literally just from him walking and approaching. It was like the Lord said, it's time to touch him. And he starts to weep, a, t a tear comes huh. down his eyes. And then all of a sudden, this man that just told me, I hate black people, he goes, I'm sorry. The power of God, the fear of the Lord, the glory realm does not just do miracles. It's not just tangible miracles like physical healings. It's not just the changing of weather patterns. It destroys walls of division. It causes things that divide us and separate us. Even in today's culture of what's going on around the world with many different reasons to be divided, the glory is the answer. Why haven't you talked to our president, the last few presidents? Where are you when we need you? I know where you are. You're going to talk to those people in our studio audience and are watching right now and release the fire. Are you ready for the fire? I want you to know this, those that are watching, those that are listening, I told you earlier that the fire of God is contagious. Now to think about the early church, they were born in fire. They were submerged in fire. When the fire of God came, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, but they were also brought into dimensions, depths of the glory of God. That's what's about to happen to you. It's not just going to be a sensation. You are about to be activated in the depths of the glory realm. That is about to happen right now. Father, it's in the name of Jesus. I pray for people that are watching all around the world, no matter where they are located, I release an impartation of the fire of the Spirit. I release and I call mantles of fire down from heaven to come upon this generation that you would begin to walk and be activated in the dimensions of the supernatural. You're about to raise the dead. You're about to heal the sick. You're about to prophesy. You're going to speak the heart and mind of God. You are going to be a manifested son and God is going to release that fire on you. So I say be activated right now in fire and I release it on you today in Jesus name.